And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for a discussion stream today. We're going to be talking about the winners and the losers of patch 1.2 plus an entire metagame uh, breakdown where we talk about all the decks and um, how they're going to be affected. Patch 1.2 is going to be live tomorrow or I guess Wednesday at around uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time, you know, depending on what your time zone is. That can be different, um, but that's whenever we're going to start our stream tomorrow. Normally, um, the stream on Wednesdays, we'd start at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's an early stream day, but with but with the patch being live and just like two hours after that, that's whenever we will start. All right, so then today, I was trying to decide like what to do today, and basically uh, for the stream, and I really did like just like playing games like with the with the everything changing tomorrow and all the decks changing a lot of cards changing tomorrow i didn't really feel like playing cards that were going to change tomorrow today and i didn't really even want to play like the stuff that wasn't going to change today because i may want to play them you know tomorrow or, or so on and so let's let's just do a good discussion stream so we'll have a short stream today but then i'll be playing five decks tomorrow to make up for that all right, so some winners. So I'm pick, I picked out, I went today and kind of went through and I picked out 10 winners, 10 losers of, uh, of our different patch notes. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go and talk about them. this. Is, they're in no particular order. Like it's not, um, I'm not, I don't have it like, like this card is number 10. And then, you know, like we, and we're counting down to the number one biggest winner. Cause that, that's kind of hard to say, but here's just uh, 10 cards that are winners. I think uh, first one I want to talk about is Remembrance. So uh, Remembrance isn't changing, you know, this, and that's the thing. Is I'm not just like going to take, okay, here are 10 cards that got buffed. These are winners. Here's 10 cards that got nerfed. Here are losers. Um, we'll talk about some of the cards that got buffed or nerfed. But anyway, the thing about Remembrance is it's, uh, you know, it's a, obviously, as you see here, six mana spell, get a, someone a random five cost follower from Demacia. It's already a pretty good card, but that's kind of slow. Like you can play this on turn three, but if you play it on turn three, you're not doing anything on turn one or turn two, most likely unless you have an Entune card. But that's kind of slow against like the burn decks. However, burn got nerfed quite a bit. It really did. And so if, if burns a lot uh, less in the format and the, therefore the format slowing down, turn three remembrance can be a really, really powerful play. And another reason why it got um, buffed is, of course, the uh, Great Horn Companion. This is going to be a 5-5 starting tomorrow. And so if you can get this down on turn three, like let's say you have the, the attack token turn three, you play Remembrance, you hit Great Horn Companion, which there there's four options you can hit. So you have a 25% chance of hitting Great Horn Companion. You'd have a 5-5 Scout, so you'd be able to attack for five twice already on turn three. That's really, really good. Um, so yeah, Remembrance is kind of like my my number one, or like there's just the first card that we're uh, talking about as a card that has gotten better. All right, uh, let's see, next card. Um, I guess I should clear clean that up a little bit. Really, Crimson Curator shows up too? <laughs> All right, there we go. Crimson Disciple. Uh, this is a card that I think is is gotten better after the patch. For the most part, that I think that Noxus is going to really rely on this card even more than it is. It's already in almost every single Noxus deck, but I think that g moving forward, it's just going to be a huge part of Noxus's identity as a region. Um, Legion Rearguard getting... Uh, you know, getting nerfed to be a 3-1 now has, has made, you know, playing Legion Rearguard a lot worse. And we'll talk about that in uh, the losers category. What makes a card like Crimson Disciple so much more important uh, when you have cards like Transfusion and Imperial Demolitionist that now don't have a one drop to be able to be used on to do the one damage. And so you really need to have that two drop. Of course, um, Vladimir also getting buffed is you know crimson disciples going in basically every single vladimir deck right like i mean yeah it's just it's going in every single one of those and it, vladimir is not going to be like amazing still it's not going to be like it's not going to like take over the metagame or b tier one or anything like that most likely 
but Crimson Disciple will definitely be all over there. So yeah, basically, uh, and then also like Crimson Disciple doesn't trade down. Like there's not like a one mana, th like three, like if people don't play Legion Rearguard anymore, that's, you know, a three power um, one drop that, you know, maybe Crimson Disciple can be bigger than, than the rest of the one drops being a two, three. Uh, so that's important as well. All right, so that's our second card. Uh, card number three. All right, this one's kind of a, a two-part thing to kind of go with, with Legion Rearguard. So we we're just talking about Legion Rearguard, how it's it's worse. Well, then, if we're not if like Noxus decks are going to be moving away from Legion Rearguard, and I'll talk more about why that would be, or just talk more about Rearguard again in the uh, loser section. But if you're looking towards other one mana cards <clears throat> for noxus decks even like vladimir decks you know if you want things that are not one toughness i think um a, one drop that could maybe gain a lot is jagged butcher which i guess i don't know how to spell is it just all right let's just go with butcher <laughs> oh is it not even butcher all right this is embarrassing what is the name of this card? I thought it was Jagged Butchered. Oh, that's right, that's right. I have this filtered by two mana. Okay. Wow, all right. <laughs> right, I, I filtered that by two mana to get rid of that Crimson Disciple. <laughs> there we go. I don't have uh, fancy editing capabilities. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, so <laughs> you get... Uh, Video's a little rough. That's all right, though. Um, but yeah, Jagged Butcher could be a really important one drop. Bilgewater, in general, is going to be a region that, uh, you know, it wasn't touched at all as far as nerfing goes, where a lot of, you know, basically all the other regions were. And some other cards look like they'll maybe line up better in the format. Things like even like Make It Rain now, like, it, you know, kills lots of one drops. Like Jagged Butcher is actually a one drop that doesn't die to Make It Rain. It can be a 3-3. Three, three, um, you know, later on while it's still being a 2-2 two, two on turn one. This looks like a, a one drop that's going to be really important. You know, if, if um, you know, if like Vladimir decks and Crimson Disciple or like even Swain Crimson Disciple, like that kind of stuff, the Noxus decks, if they're going a little bit bigger, they they need other, you know, like another region to pair with. And maybe they want another like new one drop to pair with. In a different region and bilgewater could be a really good um a really good region to turn to so yeah i'm, I'm expecting jagged butcher to kind of be like uh one of the new highly played one drops yep it's a, just a better cythria but yeah being a three three sometimes can be huge but speaking of one drops th these two kind of go together so these are like number three together is of course omen hawk Right, like your your Vladimir decks, uh, if you're going if you're going with Freljord for all the stuff that it has, um, there's there's just a lot of good ways to pair Freljord with Noxus, whether it's Vladimir or Swain or Sejuani. There's just a lot of yeah, there's just a lot of great pairing between those. And Omen Hawk is probably going to be like uh, just a great one drop to you know always have in there. And so. Um, now Omen Hawk actually trades with Legion Rearguard. If people are still playing Burn and they're if people still play Legion Rearguard, that just makes Omen Hawk even better because it actually trades with the Rearguard now. Um, so yeah, real important. Um, so yeah, Omen Hawk uh, definitely looking like in a better spot. So that's number three putting together is Jagged Butcher and Omen Hawk. All right. Uh, speaking of Bilgewater. Um, if, you know, if we're playing more Jagged Butcher and if we're just seeing more Bilgewater in general, of course, a card that got much, much better is Pilfered Goods. And it really didn't need to get much better, but I'm, I'm expecting to see a whole lot more Pilfered Goods after this patch. Um, so uh, for a few reasons, one, of course, as I was saying, Bilgewater as a region didn't get hit where a lot of other regions did. So therefore the just the while the while Bilgewater's power level is staying the same, the power level of other regions are kind of coming down to it or or you know underneath it, you know, that kind of thing. Two, Burn Aggro again took a big hit, you know, with 
Legion rear guard, boom crew rookie, both getting nerfed. So theoretically, if that took that deck took a big hit, the metagame should just be slower. And if the metagame's slower, Pilfered Goods gets even better. Because Pilfered Goods, the thing, the kind of decks that this card's not good against are the very aggressive decks that are killing you right away. That you don't have time to to spend two mana on a card that doesn't affect the board at all. You know, like you're not putting anything into the board, you're not uh, removing something of theirs, you know, you're not slowing them down at all. All you're doing is drawing cards like that you know that's that's all this is is a card draw spell even though you're, you're drawing cards from your opponent's deck instead of yours it's still just a card draw spell and so against really fast decks you don't have time to draw cards but the longer the games the slower the games um the more easy it is to spend mana drawing cards so pilfered goods um definitely got a bump Okay, let's see. Uh, another card. Okay, so speaking of uh, last card about the uh, burn nerf. One one other thing that gets a lot better. Like let's say if you know you know rear guard and boom crew really hurt burn, which burn wasn't like necessarily saying like it wasn't. It was already kind of struggling a little bit like recently, but if it really starts to struggle, uh, then. Um, a deck that really gets um, a huge bump from that is going to be Elusives. So I'm just going to use Navori Conspirator as my Elusive here. Because the Elusives are really good against uh, against like other mid-range decks because your things are unblockable and they have great buffing ability to be able to race. You know, your Omen Hawk plus Navori Conspirator, like that combo is just a great combo. Uh, but then, you know, you have... Uh, you have the new card, um, uh, Spoils. Oh. What's, oh, man, I should have written down what that new card was. But anyway, you have Jewel Protector to, to pump them up. Um, shared Spoils. There we go. Shared Spoils. Um, just a lot of ways to, to buff your own things. Um, Fury of the North is a, is a really good um, pump spell. And you can you can win with these elusive units, but the burn aggro decks were just faster, more efficient, and gave uh, the elusives problem. So, you know, if burns hurt a bunch, elusives obviously didn't get hurt whatsoever, and so that could be um, a big boon here. Plus, it could be just like the re the replacement budget deck. I've been playing the championless elusives deck recently where we have no champions, just a couple epics, like two epics, I think. Um, the seven mana Way Wayfarer Hatchling, and then just a lot of commons and some rares. Uh, and so if if that becomes, you know, if that deck becomes good, and well, it's already good, but if it becomes even better because of the hurt of burn, then it's something that you could see really swarm the metagame because it is a championless deck, so that could be like the new budget go-to deck instead of burn um all right all right so just kind of moving on uh let's go to one of the the champions that got a buff was shen so shen at first whenever whenever we uh read the the patch notes first and i had like my first um impression all all the the card is getting buffed. It's just getting an additional point of power. So it's going to be a 3-5 now. And whenever it levels up, it'll be a 4-6. That's all that's happening with Shen. And at first I thought, okay, well, Shen's still not playable. Like, that's not very much. But the more and more I thought about it, like last night and today, um, kind of, you know, stepping back, thinking about it, I actually do think it's actually a really good buff. Because think about if you're playing a control deck, which is really what Shen has struggled with. In the past like because shen has a lot of toughness but that doesn't really matter against control you need to have you need to have your card be a threat and it, for attacking for two every turn control decks even other mid but even other mid-range decks but like can uh control decks could just ignore shen kill everything else and you know play your own champions and stuff and like those other champions are going to take over the game before shen does because it's a four mana card that's attacking for two like you can just ignore it it doesn't, it, you know, it needs to have um, an ally to support. Well, now if you're attacking for three, 
that really like that really does make a big difference. There's a there's a real big difference between attacking for two, attacking for three, and and I think that is a, a pretty good buff to Shen because it starts turning into like a real threat that you know like that damage adds up a lot faster. You know like basically two attacks are the same as what three attacks were before. And so I think I think that really does push Shen into being a lot more playable. It's already a good card against aggro because it has five toughness at four mana, and um, and just like the kind of cards that you pair Shen with is usually pair Shen with a bunch of challengers because you want Shen to support an ally with challenger and force your opponent to block the supported ally that has the barrier. Because if not, if you're just pairing Shen with just kind of regular generic cards, whenever you attack with Shen and you have an, a supported ally uh, that has a barrier, your opponent just doesn't block that thing, right? Because it just, you know, just has a barrier. So like, all right, well, we won't block that. We'll just block Shen instead. So um, so yeah, got to pair Shen with, with uh, units with Challenger. And th those are uh, usually units that are good against aggro. Um, or smaller mid-range decks. And uh, so Shen was already good there, but Shen struggled against control, so adding an additional point of power really does make it better. Does that, does that mean Shen's going to be tier 1? I don't know, but I think that it, I think that there will be a good use of... like Obviously, you pair Shen with Demacia, and there's a lot of really good Demacia cards, and so I think there will be some good use for Shen, and, and maybe we will actually start seeing more Shen in the metagame. I don't think it'll be in any other deck besides Demacia, but I think it does fit the Demacia deck very well. Um, so, similar to that, next card. I think Laurent Proje is a big winner um, of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, so basically. I think that uh, a couple of reasons. One, Shen needs to be paired with challengers, right? So you want challengers to pair with Shen. So Florent Protégé is is perfect. It's another challenger that you can go with Fiora, that you can play on turn three, and then turn four if you have the attack token, play your Shen, and then immediately attack with these two. But second, the um, Grizzled Ranger nerf. No, sorry. The Loyal Badger Bear. There you go. The Loyal Badger Bear nerf was big for Protégé. Because before, Protégé, being a 2-4, just could not trade with a 4-4. And if you're playing a 2-4 Protégé while your opponent's playing a bunch of 4-4s four with Badger Bears and Grizzled Rangers that turn into Badger Bears, that's just that's just a losing battle. Protégé was still good against smaller creatures and like the smaller aggro decks, but you were just a, a losing battle there. But now, Badger Bear being a 3-4, Protégé actually trades with Badger Bear. Like you can, you know, if they get in combat once, you have a 2-1 and a 3-2, and if they get in combat again, they just completely trade. So they actually trade, but then Protégé just has more use with the Challenger. Um, I think it has more use than uh, Badger Bear does. Yeah, who does not know the name Laurent? Uh, another thing that's important about Laurent Protégé, besides just the whole it's great with Shen, is... As we were talking about earlier, Bilgewater got a big buff, right? And by, okay, I guess that's not completely correct. Bilgewater did not get nerfed at all while everything else got nerfed. And Bilgewater has really good cards against control, like Pilfered Goods, where if aggro got hurt, control should be should be better, just kind of, um, you know, by uh, by default. Now, the thing that Bilgewater has, the two of their most important cards are Black Market Merchant and Twisted Fate. They're both 2-2s. Two and so, therefore, playing a 3-mana card that's a 2-4, that's a challenger, is perfect. Perfect card to take out Twisted Fate and Black Market Merchant and even um, uh, Zap Sprayfin, another 4-mana 2-2. Two -two. And um, so, if Bilgewater is bigger... And a lot of people are playing those kind of cards, and you're playing your Demacia deck. You don't want, like, instead of Loyal Badger Bear, you really want Laurent Protege. And uh, you want to be using this for Challenger to be able to take those cards out. Um, so, yeah, so I think I think Protege is going to be kind of like the new default three drop in Demacia, not Loyal Badger Bear. 
All right, now, if if Shen's good and Protégé is good and Demacia, you know, Demacia should still be just fine, right? And like Shen and Protégé, like like we're gonna be turning into like a more of a challenger deck, that kind of thing. And if but if like Burn Aggro isn't as good, well then a card that just got better is Ruination. Because obviously against Burn, Ruination is just too slow. But against Demacia decks, and even against um, like Elusive decks, Ruination is not too slow. Like this, you know, this card can be devastating there. And so it looks like it looks like the metagame is going to slow down a little bit. And especially if there's more like Vladimir, like if, if Noxus kind of goes away from like all all out super aggressive burn stuff like it is right now and goes more towards Vladimir and Swain and bigger damage outputs and um, like those kind of cards, which it you know likely will. That's just great news for Ruination. Um, yeah, also the... The region that Ruination is not good against, of course, is Ionia. Um, and <clears throat> because of Deny. And Ionia got hit pretty hard with Deep Meditation and Karma, both costing additional mana now, especially the Deep Meditation one. Um, so yeah, so maybe maybe uh, Ruination is going to kind of make a comeback, because you don't see like a bunch of Ruination right now, but... Um, maybe that'll change. So, all right, so that's the next card was Ruination. Two more to talk about. So, kind of keeping on going on like the same theme. All right, so let's say that the, the form, let's just kind of go by our assumptions that the formats are going to be a little bit slower. They're going to be, it's going to be a little bit more mid-rangey. Um, these, uh, you know, mid-rangey with cards like, you know, Shen, Laurent, Protégé, Vladimir, Swain, like that kind of, like those kind of things, Sejuani. If, if all those things are good, not only is Ruination good, but then going over the top of those cards is also really good. So two things that go over the top, are gonna be my last two things. Honestly, Ezreal got, uh, like Ezreal's gonna be a lot, lot better. Than what it than what it was. Maybe we're going back to Karma Ezreal being the best deck again. <laughs> you know, like going full circle. Since before before the patch, that was the best deck. Maybe it's going back there. Ezreal's really struggled against these super fast burn decks. It's it's just kind of too slow for that. And even the but then also even the Demacia decks, they just beat down too hard. Um, you know, like Loyal Badger Bear was just so efficient. Same with Grizzled Ranger hitting for four, then attacking again. Like those things are so efficient. That it was push that Ezreal was was struggling against those, but if now if we're moving towards Laurent Protege instead of Ezreal, um, and you know moving to to slower stuff like that, uh, or sorry Laurent Protege instead of uh, <laughs> instead of Loyal Badger Bear, you know if, like if that's a change that we're making, and if just you know there's no more like Legion Rearguard, like not ha like Legion Rearguard being a three one also makes Thermogenic Beam a lot better. You know, looking at your PNZ removal, your Static Shocks, like Thermogenic Beam sometimes didn't kill the one drop. Right, they go turn one Legion Rearguard, and you're staring at a Thermogenic Beam in hand. You're taking three, and that's that's a big deal now that Thermogenic Beam kills the one drops. But yeah, all these like if there's going to be a lot more mid range and slower decks like that, if things slow down, that's just amazing for Karma and Ezreal especially Ezreal like this is the combo card that other decks can't stop like once you have Ezreal turned on it's just you know like it just basically impossible to stop so I think Ezreal I think Ezreal is a huge winner um in this and not something that I I love I, I don't really like the play pattern of Ezreal myself but uh, you know I'm just saying how it is and then another big winner uh, talking about cards that go over the top is Maokai. Why does Neverglade Collector come up whenever I type in Maokai? That's weird. <laughs> I don't know why, but oh well. Um so yeah, same same kind of thing. A deck that can go over the top um is Maokai, you know, leveling up tossing out the opponent's deck like that's that's really what, what we're doing here it's kind of the same thing just the deep sea monsters 
in general, like the sea monsters going deep, they can really go over the top of things. Um, now, some parts, some aspects of like Maokai decks are going to be a little weaker. Some of the sh Shadow Owl cards we'll talk about um, in the losers, but overall, if you think about like Maokai versus Loyal Badger Bear, didn't work out, right? Like you're playing Badger Bear on turn three, your Maokai is coming in, in a turn after that, and it can't even block that thing. But now we can block Loyal Badger Bear, we can block Laurent Protege. Um, and of course, uh, if the deck, if decks are just less aggressive, if they're taking longer than things that have inevitability, where we have the inevitability of just um, eliminating your library, basically like eliminating your deck and um, or obliterating your deck, that's going to just be stronger. The longer the game goes, the the more the stronger cards with inevitability are, and that's what Maokai has, and that's what Ezreal has. And so those could, could be two cards that um, have gotten better after uh, this patch. Um, oh, okay. So Neverglade Collector may have Maokai in its name in another language. There we go. Yeah, so so yeah, Maokai and just deep the deep decks in general, Nautilus. I was kind of thinking about which one to say, like Nautilus or Maokai. But yeah, like that kind of deck definitely gets better. Yeah, you can you can kind of you know you can kind of retool it also because right now it's it's uh, built specifically for for burn. You know maybe you take out car, a card like Withering Whale um, or things like that. Um, you know so you get to retool it and start fighting more towards mid range decks. And these decks like that this kind of deck can go over the top of mid range decks. But then also against control. So like it's it's a deck that can go over the top of mid-range, but it can still be good against control because of this level up. You can still, even if like the control deck's like killing all your stuff and you can't get damage across, all you need to do is just have enough things die till you have 25, till you've tossed 25 things, then play your Maokai, it's leveled up, your opponent's deck is obliterated, and you just gotta stay alive for four more turns. Okay, so there we go. So those were 10 winners of patch 1-2. Now we're going to go, go ahead and discuss 10 losers from the patch. And then what we're going to be doing for the third video today is I'm going to be going through uh, Mobile Addict's meta tier list. And we're, let, we'll talk about every single one of these decks because I know it's kind of easier to talk about all the decks instead of individual cards. So we'll go through. There's a lot of decks here. We'll go through each one and kind of talk about if we think it's getting better or worse. So, you know, you'll be able to see uh, your deck and uh, everything like that. All right. But those y'all watching this later on YouTube, um, let me know in the comments if I if I missed anything, you know, like any, you know, if there's anything you disagreed with, anything that I missed. Also, let me know what are you excited to see? Like, what do you want me to start building right away for the stream tomorrow, Thursday? What kind of new decks uh, do you want to see with this patch update? All right, but that's it here for our winners of patch one, two, and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching.